Juju probably told Pittsburgh and them, hey, y'all could have left me on injured reserve for all this. YouTube, team keep it clean. I, I, I did not see this coming. I know so many people saw it coming. So many people said, oh, man, this thing going to be a blowout. But I really thought the Steelers were going to come in this thing as a super heavy, crazy underdogs who literally nobody gave them a chance. Even Ben Roethlisberger said, I know he was joking, but he was like, oh, we're just going to go out there and have some fun. But behind so many jokes, there lies some truth. Uh, but a lot of times it ain't even look like the Steelers were having fun. And what ended up that their Achilles heel really for the past couple of seasons it ended up biting them right in the butt. And that's what the offense, yeah, the short passing game, they, they have this, this style of offense, this yak style of offense where they throw underneath to the receivers and, and hope that they get some, some yards after the catch. It ended up catching up to them because it could not keep up with that Chiefs offense. Steelers offense went out there, punt, 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 punt. Then they started turning the ball over. Um, Najee Harris had his first fumble of the year. I mean, it came at the worst time possible, uh, but he had his worst, his first fumble of the year and his worst fumble of the year because it was his only fumble of the year. Um, then Ben Roethlisberger threw the interception and it's just, it, it just went from bad, uh, to worse. This now the way that the game started off. It started off with some defense. It was like the, the Steelers, they came out there. Their chests were out, puffed out. They were like, all right, we got this. And they were making some nice tackles and making some nice stops. But when you look at the way that that Chiefs offense operates, man, it, it, it's not fair. It doesn't make any sense because it's like they, 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 they set you up. They set you up. Cause they'll start off, they'll show you, they'll show you some stuff, and they'll also be looking at what you're doing, and they were like, oh, okay, so this is how they responded in this situation. Okay, this is what they did in this situation. Oh, okay, this is what they did in that situation. Okay, we got it. So they're taking notes. All right, cool, cool, cool. So then they get a feel for you, and then that's when that offense they make a couple of adjustments here and there. They make a couple of changes here and there, and they throw that bait out for you, and they know, okay, this is what they're gonna do in this situation because they did it before. They showed it to us before. All right, got them. And they make stuff happen. The way that they design this offense, it's like they do a lot of simple stuff, but it's so effective because the situational play calling is on a whole nother level. It's on a whole nother level. I saw so many times where it will be third and six, third and seven, third and 12, third and long. And they know the Steelers are coming. They know the Steelers are on the way. They know the Steelers are going to send pressure. I mean, they got the, the NFL sack leader and, and, and the best pass rusher in the league right now in T.J. Watt on the other side. So you know they were going to send stuff, something. But they would do that. They'd be like, all right, here comes the pressure, guys. And sometimes they will get there. But a lot of times they would be like, all right, here comes the pressure, guys. Pressure will come. Screen pass. Here's a screen pass for your troubles. And they would convert. Those screen passes would go for big yards. McKinnon. Man, I was watching this game. I was like, who is number one? Is he a receiver? Is he a runner? Who, who is that? And I didn't even realize it was McKinnon. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the same McKinnon from the 49ers. And the same McKinnon from the Vikings, isn't it? I believe that's him. But let me know if I'm wrong. But he was just balling today. And with the Chiefs offense... <laughs> Everybody eats. Everybody eats. Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, Pringle, even the offensive lineman, he was out there getting touchdowns. And it's like, the, the oh my goodness, man. I just, I, I love to see it. And, but it just makes me so frustrated when I watch my own team. Um, when I watch my Ravens offense and it's like, man, we just, I don't even want to get into that because it's not about that. But Chiefs. Their offense is just, it's, it's amazing. Patrick Mahomes, the, some of the throws that he made in this game, uh, some of those throws on the run, and I know he's done it plenty of times before, and you see so many highlights here and there, but he continues to add to those highlights with more and more throws the, like the ones that he made tonight. Um, TJ Watt, amazing player. He was the one that tipped the ball that ended up being intercepted. Uh, and he was the one that where, who was that that fumbled for the Chiefs? I forgot who it was, but I think it was number 31. Whoever it was, uh, he fumbled the ball. I think he actually fumbled twice on that play because he fumbled the ball once. 
Then he picked it up. And then he fumbled the ball again after Cam Hayward came in, whacked him. And TJ Watt was like, all right, Pittsburgh offense, y'all don't want to do nothing. I got it. Don't worry, y'all. I got y'all. Scoop, score. And for the longest, he has scored Pittsburgh's only touchdown of the night. For the longest. And then finally, after literally forever, uh, their offense decided, oh, hold up. We, oh, we, we playing tonight? The, the playoff game is tonight? Oh, okay, all right, let's go. And then they start waking up a little bit. But one thing about this Chiefs team that I loved was the fact that the, with Pittsburgh, they made it a 21-point a, a game. And, yeah, that's three scores, but at the same time, that could happen like that. And then Kansas City, they ended up responding with a touchdown. They weren't the, – and that's another thing I love about the way that this team is run. They don't just lay down. They can be up big, but they don't just go, all right, we up big. Let's go to sleep now. No, they don't do that. If they're up big and they notice you even get – you even thinking about coming back. Enough times they will continue to score. At least they'll try to. And in this case, they tried and they succeeded. They kept racking up the points. They continuously did it. And that's what it's about in this league, man. That's what it's about in this league. It's about points. It's about scoring. Scoring offenses are the ones that are going to get the job done. You could have all the yards in the world, but if you ain't got no points to show for it, it means nothing. Nothing. You could be top five in this amount of yards, top five in this amount of yards. All that stuff is great, but where you need to be at the top at is in points in scoring in touchdowns and the Chiefs they continue to have one of the best offenses in the league they continue to have that and it's just it's just beautiful to see um Roethlisberger you could tell like that his his arm man and I remember watching when he played my Ravens um a couple weeks ago uh in the season finale in the last game of the year uh, and he wasn't throwing any deep passes he threw one no, he threw two maybe, but one of them got picked off. But even in this game, when you watch him throw that deep ball, it's like it's such a struggle. And his, his zip is gone. His, his zip is all gone. You watch the way, like, it's like the ball was just struggling to go far. He missed some guys. There was um, a, a play intended for Deontay Thompson. And um, Deontay, he had his guy beat. He had his guy beat. Or is it Deontay Johnson? I always forget whether it's Deontay Johnson or Deontay Thompson. Either way, he had his guy beat. And Ben Roethlisberger threw it, and the ball was like, er, nope, short. He, that, his, his arm is like, it's shot. It's shot. So, shout out to him, though. Um, I, I really thought that this may be the whole little seven, seven seeds, number seven Ben Roethlisberger, Steelers, seven Super Bowls. <laughs> God, that, this was the one team, and, and, and it ain't in no hating way, but this is one team that I just, I, I did not want to see, the, and did, I did not see want to see them win. I just didn't, and I, that, that really sounds like some hater stuff, but not in no hating way, because y'all know I don't, be, I don't be hating on no teams, um, but I just, I did not want to see the Steelers win the Super Bowl. Um, I also don't want to see the Bucks win the Super Bowl either because it's like, all right, Brady, we get it. Um, the Cow oh, man, did y'all see that Cowboys and 49ers game? That Cowboys and 49ers game, the way that that game ended, that hurt me. And I don't even care about either one of the two teams. But that, oh, that game hurt. That game hurt. And, and I just felt for Cowboys. I was telling one of my guys, I said, man, if I, if, if I was a Cowboys fan, I would be balling. Balling because the way that they lost, they didn't even lose on a drop. They didn't even lose on a bad play. They didn't even lose on an interception. They didn't even lose on a hell mary. No, they lost from running out of time on a clock. Oh, so it was so painful too, and it was so close. Oh, anyway, um, so that's that. Chiefs advance. Steelers drop out. Um, I've seen a lot of people complaining about the seventh seed. In the playoffs that they just don't need to do the seven seeds anymore. We saw what happened to the Eagles. We saw what happened to the Steelers. Oh, Pennsylvania. Just not a good day for Pennsylvania teams. But anyway, that's that. So just like Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers, when it comes to being in the NFL for him and being in the playoffs for them, I'm out.